I don't want to waste too much time today talking about the government. But the economic damage they've done to our country is immense. They've put our public finances in a perilous position, wasted the chance to transform our potential in an era of low interest rates, created an economy with weak foundations. This isn't about global shocks. That's just an excuse. Nobody criticizes the government for not anticipating the war in Ukraine or denies the war was the spark for the cost of living crisis. But the war didn't ban onshore wind, the war didn't scrap home insulation, and the war didn't stall British nuclear energy. And when it comes to economic growth, the verdict of the former chancellor is right. They've created a vicious cycle of stagnation. And that's why every crisis hits Britain harder than our competitors. The only country in the G7 still poorer than it was before the pandemic. Disposable income back to 2013 levels. The worst decade for growth in two centuries. That's why we need a new partnership. Economic growth is the oxygen for our ambitions, the lifeblood of a strong society and a dynamic economy. But we have to confront the reality of our position. The lessons of the past 12 years can't be ignored. Just stop for a moment and think what working people have been through. They were told, we're all in it together. Then they paid for a mess made by banks. They cried out for economic change in a referendum, but saw their calls go unanswered. And they united to defeat a deadly virus, only to see the government break the rules that they respected. And now, a winter like no other. The biggest hit to living standards in British history, where millions, the length and breadth of our country, will go without food or heating. Once again, asked to pay the price. Don't get me wrong, I know people in this room are struggling too. Your borrowing rates, through the roof. Energy costs, astronomical. More small businesses going under now than at any time since records begun. And I know that every single one is a personal tragedy, an ambition, a dream, an investment in a better future, gone. No mistake, it's tough, and it will be tough for a while. But that's why we need to answer the burning question. What will we do differently? How will we help restore the contract that says, work hard and Britain will give you a fair chance? Because let me tell you, that's not how working people feel about our country right now. Not this winter. So this has to be a turning point. Britain needs a new business model. And that will be hard. Changing a business model is hard. You all know that. Nonetheless, it's time for all of us, government, business, trade unions, to get behind the idea, both basic and radical, that our country can grow in a way that serves working people, that higher productivity can come from unlocking their potential and that we can work together to put their interests first. This has to be the common goal of our partnership, and it must set a new direction on growth, a new way of governing that at times is challenging our instincts and will challenge our instincts. No more trickle-down experiments. That idea has been tested to destruction. But equally, if the South East races ahead, redistribution can't be the one word plan for the rest of Britain. You can grow an economy that way, of course you can. But it's not enough. Working people want growth from the grassroots. Jobs that are well paid and secure. Communities standing on their own feet. Public services strong enough to help them succeed. So I promise you now, my Labour government will care, must care, as much about raising productivity everywhere as we've done in the past about redistribution. 
we're going to throw everything at growing our collective contribution, our productive capacity in every community. And that takes us inevitably to the supply side of the economy. That's why our first priority on tax has always been to scrap business rates. We will level the playing field for our high streets. And with help from Lord Jim O'Neill, we'll make Britain the best place in the world to start a new business. But we also need to look at the supply side differently. It's not just about tax and enterprise. Take the current state of our labour market. So much of this comes back to our public services. Yes, there are other factors. But you can't tell me that the number of older people falling out of work has got nothing to do with the millions stuck on NHS waiting lists. Or that the growing number of people suffering with mental health isn't a drag on our productivity. No, the state of our public services is an economic crisis just as much as a social crisis. So we will launch the biggest training programme since the creation of the NHS. Increase capacity with more doctors, more nurses, more health visitors. Reform the employment service to get more people back to work. Give everyone who needs it access to mental health treatment within four weeks. And build a modern childcare system that supports parents, especially women, to flourish. This is what the US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen calls modern supply-side economics. And that's the philosophy that will drive us to do the hard yards on growth. But we'll also need to be pragmatic on the basic lack of people. We won't ignore the need for workers to come to this country. We can't have a situation, as we did with HGV drivers, where temporary shortages threaten to cripple entire sectors of our economy. That would be anti-growth and it would be anti-business. But I want to be clear here, with my Labour government, any movement in our points-based migration system, whether via the skilled worker route or the shortage occupations list, will come alongside new conditions for business. We will expect you to bring forward a clear plan to boost skills and more training, for better paying conditions, for investment in new technology. Now, we can talk about how this is done. Dialogue is at the heart of partnership. But negotiation with trade unions will be part of it. I said at the TUC conference, my Labour Party is unashamedly pro-business. And I say here today that trade unions must be a crucial part of our partnership. But our common goal must be to help the British economy off its immigration dependency. To start investing more in training workers who are already here. Migration is part of our national story. Always has been, always will be. And the Labour Party will never diminish the contribution it makes to our economy, to public services, to your businesses and our communities. But let me tell you, the days when low pay and cheap labour are part of the British way on growth must end. This isn't about Brexit. All around the world, business is waking up to the fact we live in a new era for labour. And while they're adapting, our low growth model is holding us back. It's why we've set out a new deal for working people that will deliver higher pay, stronger rights, and better work. Not just for social justice, but also for the new reality on growth. Let me give you an example. Technology. Britain has fewer industrial robots than almost every comparable country. We're behind Germany, France, Spain, Slovenia, Slovakia, Belgium. It's a long list. And in terms of competition over the long run, one that borders on disaster. Now, I know most businesses get this. I've seen for myself how you invest in your people and their productivity. At Valent in Derbyshire, I met the apprentices using their skills 
in conjunction with the new technologies of heat pumps, that technology will continue to adapt. But those apprentices will be at the forefront of that change, working today, training for the opportunities of the future.